In this tutorial, we will take a look at working with a multi-line text column with the Append Changes option enabled. Whenever the item is edited and new text is typed in that column, it is appended to the existing text. All entries in that column are displayed as history records along with the date and timestamps and the usernames of those who added the text as pictured in this example. You can see there are three history records in the Comments field. The history records for Amy and Ainsley display the text they added to the Comments field. Notice the history record for Ben Casey doesn't have any text next to it. That's because Ben corrected the address, he did not add any text in the comments field. SharePoint still creates a history record for the change made to the item, but without any text next to his name. To demonstrate creating a multi-line text field with the append option, I will add a column for storing comments to a customer contacts list. It will give me a place I can note any special information about the customers, such as likes and dislikes, or keep track of issues and resolutions. I will start by opening my customer's contact list from the left navigation bar. The first thing I must do in order to add a multi-line text column with append changes enabled is to enable the versioning option for the list. Versioning is what saves the history of each entry in the column. If versioning is not enabled for the list, SharePoint will not allow me to enable the append changes option for the column. To enable versioning for the customer's list, I select the Settings drop-down menu, then choose List Settings. In the Customize window, I select Versioning Settings. In the List Versioning Settings screen here, I set Item Versioning History to Yes. Then I'll select OK at the bottom to complete it. That returns me to the Customize screen. From here, I'll use my breadcrumb trail to return to the customer's list. Now I can add my new column with the Append Changes option. So now I'll go to the Settings menu, choose Create Column. First thing I do here is give my column a name, which I'm going to call this Comments. Then I choose the type of column, which is multiple lines of text. For this example, I'm not going to put in a description or require that the column contains information. For number of lines for editing, I will leave that at the default of six lines, which will be more than enough for my comments. For type of text to allow in this column, I have three choices, which are plain text, rich text, which is the default, allowing bold, italics, and text alignment, and the third option of enhanced rich text, allowing rich text with pictures, tables, and hyperlinks. I will leave this at the default for rich text. And for the option, append changes to existing text, I will set that to yes, then click OK to complete the column. The new comments column is added to the list. Rather than being blank, as you would expect with a new column, it contains a link titled View Entries. This is because the column has the append changes feature enabled. When the View Entries link is selected, as I'm doing here, it displays the customer's information along with a history of entries in that column. Right now, the comments field displays no existing entries because nothing has been entered. I get the same screen when I click on the company name. To demonstrate this append feature, I will add a few comments to the Brunswick Properties item. To edit the item, I mouse over the company name, click the drop-down arrow, and choose Edit Item. Next, I will add a comment in the Comments field. I've added the comment indicating that we will begin shipping our orders overnight to the Brunswick Properties Company. I'll click OK to save the change. I will now add another comment to the Brunswick Properties item here. Before I enter my second comment, you'll notice the previous comment listed as a history record below the comments field box. I've completed adding my second comment here, and I'll select OK to save that. Next, I will change the contact information for Brunswick Properties. Our new contact is Andrew Bradley. I've changed the contact name up above, and also notice down below the comments box, the second comment has been added to the history list. I'll choose OK to save my change. 
Now I want to just view the Brunswick Properties information, so I will click right on the company name. You will see the three history records down in the comments field. The most recent history record is at the top with just my name and the date. No text appears because I changed the contact information. I didn't add a comment. If I want to see what was changed for that history record, I click on the version history link on the top. And this displays a list of all the history for the Brunswick Properties record. Here you can see the last change made was the first name and last name of the contact. So I'll use my breadcrumb trail return to the Brunswick Properties screen. And from here, I'll click the close button to return to the customer list. As you can see, the append changes feature with the multi-line text field is a nice way to record information that is automatically tracked with the date and username. This concludes the tutorial on a multi-line text column with append changes.